Hi guys, Jackie M. Now, this is for a blog post that I wrote and I just want to quickly shoot a video just to clarify some of the points mentioned in the blog post in case it's too heavy reading and hard for you to visualize. But I just want to cover the topic of how you convert uh, Malaysian recipes that are not written for the Thermomix and use them to use the Thermomix to cook them essentially. Okay, so that's basically the premise. And these are there are four things that I take into consideration which will help you to decide how to use the Thermomix for non Thermomix Malaysian recipes. Okay, first of all, the Thermomix in non guided cooking settings. Okay, so we're not talking about guided cooking, we're not talking about cookie do or whatever, we're talking about manual cooking. Okay, so the Thermomix uh, is driven by the time duration, okay, and the temperature and the speed of the blade that you know to, that will be stirring your food. Okay, so first of all, time. How long do I cook something for? That's you know when it's not specified in the recipe. As a rule of thumb, if I'm cooking a spice paste, a rumpa, anything that tells you to, uh, in a Malaysian recipe to cook until the oil separates, I cook it for longer than what it would usually take if I were cooking it on a stove. The reason being that the non-guided mode in a Thermomix caps out at 120 degrees of aroma, okay, depending on which school of thought you belong to, whether 120 degrees or that setting called Varoma is a hotter temperature. Basically, the hottest temperature is not hot, not as hot as your conventional stovetop cooking, so I do need to cook it for longer. Now, having said that, if I were cooking like a stew or a soup or a, like, you know, a curry or something like that, if I have the measuring cup, this is called the measuring cup, in place, okay, on the lid, and I've got all this like this, right? And I was cooking a chicken curry, I would cook it for a shorter period than what it takes me to cook on a stovetop. The reason being that 120 degrees is more than enough for me to simmer something, you know, usually when, you, when you're simmering like a curry or something like that, you simmer it at a lowish temperature, okay? When you're simmering 100, 100 degrees, 120 degrees, uh, and you've got this lid on, it's like like all the heat is kind of like contained and this has got a rubber seal so very little heat escapes from this mixing bowl okay which means you don't need to cook your curries or anything else for that matter for as long as you would typically do in a on a on a regular stove now as far as temperature okay like i said the temperature maxes are 120 degrees or something called Varoma, which is for steaming, okay? So some people think that 120 degrees is as hot as it gets. Varoma is not that hot and vice versa, okay? So there's some confusion out there. So I do toggle between the two sometimes, you know. If I want something to cook at the hottest temperature, sometimes I set it at 120, sometimes I set it at Varoma. I don't know if I've noticed any particular difference in either, but basically if I was sauteing something, I would cook it at the highest temperature available. So that's the temperature. Now, cooking speed, okay, how fast should the blade be spinning? Again, it depends on what you're cooking. If I'm cooking like a spice paste in there for a long time, say like an hour, 45 minutes, one and a half hours, okay, I run the risk of having the food get stuck on the bottom if it's spinning too slow, okay? So I do try and cook it at a higher speed, a higher relative to the stirring speed, which is the lowest. So I can stir it for like uh, at uh, speed one or speed two, okay? in the normal direction. Normal direction, in the other words, with the sharp pointy, you know, the sharp side of the blade touching your spice paste and all that, which doesn't matter because they're meant to be all minced up anyway. But if I were cooking a curry or something like that, I would cook it at a slower speed. Anything that's too fragile, like fish or, or, or vegetables or noodles and all that, right? I want to cook it at a low speed and in reverse so that the pointy, the sharp side of the blade is not cutting your food and chopping it all up and whatever. Okay, now the final point I want to bring up is the difference between the measuring cup and the simmer basket and the splash guard. Okay, so some recipes might tell you remove the measuring cup and replace it with a simmer basket or replace it with a splash guard. This splash guard only made its appearance with a TM6. Okay, so I did use to have a TM5. It did not come with this. And this, this simmer basket typically is used for cooking food inside the mixing bowl. Okay, so the idea is that you might have some soup in here. You might have some food in here and you simmer it in the soup or in the water or something like that, okay? But sometimes it might say, remove this and put the simmer basket on top. 
The reason for this is that you're doing it because you don't want all the steam to be trapped when you've got this lid on, okay? So when you're, like I said, frying spice paste and all that sort of stuff, you want the steam to escape, okay? Otherwise your paste will end up soggy, your, 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 your sambal will end up soggy, okay? So instead, you put this on top, okay? But with the TM6, you can also use this, okay? So I do use these two interchangeably. Some people say they use differently, but I do use them interchangeably, that's just me. And again, the idea is so that the food doesn't end up splashing out from the top here, okay? And obviously, if you're using it as a blender or a food processor, you always do want the measuring cup to seal off any potential like disasters, okay? So I hope you find this helpful. Go to jackiem.com.au for this blog post. It covers everything in more detail and also uses a test case of a pre-existing, uh, previously published prawn and pineapple curry by Jackie M. Yours truly and how I basically pass it for cooking in the Thermomix. Okay, I'll see you next time.